Hello. Yes, I'm come from. I'm coming from Chile. Um, for many years, I was involved in innovation. One day, I discovered that I was using 80% of my time just surviving, and uh, little time for the family, and little time to create. So I decided to study what were the innovation models, and I discovered that they were not. So I allowed myself to write one. And after I did that, things start taking real things. I, I start creating real products. And uh, I have in my lab, yeah. we developed some capacities. We are experts today, after many years, in high power ultrasound, that we are creating very important devices for mining companies, we challenged a group in the Department of Defense in the US that they were creating a hydrogen machine. The task was to produce 12 liters of hydrogen in two years. Uh, we did it 17 liters only in 21 days, using a very different way to approach the problem. Also, we developed some capacities with nanoparticles and a big, big industry that pollutes 80 million liters of water per day, ask uh, us if we can see this problem. It was not solved for 100 years. And we discovered that the problem was not cleaning the water. They need to pollute the water even more. So we apply magnetite. We activate it with ultrasound. We absorb all the ions and all the pollutants. Then, magnetically, we remove the magnetite, and the water was clean. We also uh, launched recently in Chile the first superconductivity lab or consortium. We will start creating very huge superconductor um, magnets from two to 10 Tesla that will enable to create several applications for different industries. But these are, uh, I will show you two examples. We created a system that improved the efficiency of a very big smelter. It's a very big. It produced $110 million in savings in cost. Uh, it was really something that was not sold for more than 30 years. Then I was involved in another pro project. I signed a contract with the Department of Energy of the United States, and we managed to create a device that turn solid oil into liquid oil, two or three kilometers downhole, and make very old abandoned wells to come back into production only one hour after applying this tool. This was a major breakthrough. So I was, uh, in a very short period of time, I managed to have two breakthroughs. All this breakthrough brought me only problems. When a bank told that this uh, invention for the oil has a value of billions, only two weeks later, I received a notice from a court. And I was entertained for five years in arbitrations in New York, in Chile. Very, very frustrated. Frustration? Oh, sorry. But this turn moves me to think, what is, the, what is this? What happened? I dreamed that I will one day create something important. I thought that that was, it was very amazing. Uh, an oil well that was not producing for five years, 30 minutes later was producing 32 barrels per day. Another one, 76 barrels per day. I thought that this is the big thing, but it, it was not. And if, um, if we look at this chart, it shows how exponentially are the technology growing and developing. And it's amazing, and it's not news. But what is also amazing is what is not showing this chart. In 1969, when the man arrived to the moon, all the processing power there needed today is 120 times in one iPhone. Yes, very impressive, no doubt. One question, 
How many people was living in poverty in 1969? How many people was having problems with pollution? How many people have no access to clean water in 1969? And how many today? We are talking about brilliant technology, brilliant minds, people connected, working, interacting, creating a future. I'm sorry, there is not a future if we do not, do not change the way how we are addressing the problems. This is a big opportunity. This is a platform. Sorry, David, I create a front page of the magazine to commemorate this event. It's an opportunity to talk. It's an opportunity to share my experience, but also there are 2.5 billion people that has no access to clean water. 800 million people with no education, problems with food. We cannot ignore that reality. We are living the future, but we are still struggling with the problems from the past. One third of the population has no access to clean water or stress water today two-thirds in 2025. So we decided that if we manage to create a system to take oil, can we try to create a system that removes or kills the bacteria and viruses that are responsible of one children dying every 20 seconds today? If we have all this exponential development of technologies, and these technologies for water cleaning, filtering, new materials, new membranes, new nanotubes, yes, they are very good. But we are creating innovation only for those who can afford to pay for the technology or for the innovation. So we have an idea. What if we have a molecule of water, polluted water? We put it through a nozzle. We accelerate it and create an electric discharge. We liberate one electron and charge electrically the, le the rest of the molecular. And we initiate plasma. So what happens if we create, we turn water into plasma, water into fire, and then back into water? We were assuming that viruses and bacteria will not survive the plasma state. This is the real photo of the system working. In only 2.5 milliseconds, this water molecule goes from one end to the other. And we certify this. We tested. 100% of viruses and bacteria are deactivated in, in only 2.5 milliseconds. Rosa Reyes lives in San Jose de Cerrillos, a small camp on the outskirts of Chile's capital, Santiago. She says for years the people inhabiting this camp have suffered from diseases due to the poor quality of their drinking water. But now, thanks to a new inexpensive water purification system developed by scientists at the Chilean Advanced Innovation Center, Reyes says she and her neighbors are no longer suffering. It's cleaner. Our kids aren't getting sick. It's easier for the elderly who would otherwise have to boil their water. The system works by compressing contaminated water and then feeding it into a chamber, where a quick change in pressure and exposure to an electrical field converts it into a plasma, a state of matter similar to gas. In a plasma state, the water is ionized, killing 100% of the bacteria and microbes it carried. According to Alfredo Zalesi, a scientist at the center, the system can purify 35 liters of water in just five minutes, using the same amount of energy that it takes to run a light bulb. United Nations estimates that one in six people have inadequate access to safe drinking water. Ugarte hopes their plasma purifier could dramatically reduce that number. Rosa Reyes says she prays that the benefits of the purification system will extend far beyond her small camp. We, we installed the unit 
without asking any permission. We just make the lab test to be sure that it's safe drinking water, and we put it in a very, very poor slum. People 20 years living without clean water. We improve their quality of life like this, their health, their dignity. So we only, not only kill bacteria and viruses, what we did, we connect advanced science with poverty. And that is something that we have to look at. We have to try to make the effort to really impact the quality of life of people. Today, that picture, I put it there because I'm in trouble now. I invented a system that saves lives. I don't want to be in the court again. I want to be, I don't care if I cannot get oil, but I do want to try to make the right thing with this technology. So how to go forward? Rounds of financing in Silicon Valley? Banks? I don't know. But I have a, I have a vision, I have an idea. The standard thing is to sell the technology or to license the technology. Another one is to challenge the big guys. I talked to Avina Foundation. Uh, this is a foundation that exists for 20 years in Latin America. It was uh, founded by Stefan Schmidheine, a visioner, a Swiss person. This gentleman created a huge foundation, and I challenged them. And through them, other big guys. And I said, if you put together a group of these foundations and run a large, a huge humanitarian operation, I will give you for free the license for the technology. And we are doing this. But the technology alone is not enough. The technology, the technology innovation is good. But the social innovation is really important. And we must create new business model. We have to be, to be concerned about the adoption rate of the technology. We must demand activate demand for units in communities where there is no buying power. We must look for values. We must act in a different way. We cannot create and create technologies that is not really serving the people. If we today, none of us create this, but this is the reality. We have a children dying every 20 seconds but we are using 300 liters of water to produce one liter of beer. 10,000 liters of water for one jeans. And there's lots of examples. But if we can really connect, if we can really connect people and the needs with the advance of the technology, if we can manage to create this exponential growth of the technologies and also exponentially solve the problems, we will make a better world. Can you see Twitter, a dig connecting hundreds, thousands of people through emotions? Can be more powerful emotion that save a life? I wrote three emails to Marisa Meyer from Yahoo. No answer. This is not cool. I will ask Nick for the advice. How to connect that? Uh, I have to make this cool. But what if Twitter and we connect the people through the technology and we really try to make something meaningful? We receive talents, capacity, knowledge. Let's try to make things good with all of this. Thank you. So Alfredo, um, congratulations, brilliant innovation. And you're starting to get certification through established organizations. Yeah. We, we, we made several certifications in Latin America, but recently we went to the biggest uh, organization in the US, and we ran a very, very uh, important test with the technology, and we got 100% effic efficacy in the testing. Congratulations. So, um, is there one thing people here can do to support you? Well, just uh, think that 
there is always someone that, has, that is not as privileged as, as we are. Because um, we're here, we're dreaming, we're talking. We have problems. But we have a, all this privilege that we have. Uh, it's also a commitment. Okay, well... Thank you very much for joining us. I'm sure people can talk to you with their suggestions in the break that we're about to have now. Thank you very much, okay, Alfredo Zalesi. <laughs>